Hola, this is Kathleen Evans, International Living's Costa Rica correspondent. Thanks for joining me today on our food tour of Costa Rica. Now I touched on food in our traditions video a little bit, however I'm going to expand on that and uh, even take you on a little tour. So Costa Rican cuisine is not really known in the foodie world. It's not like, hey we're going out for Costa Rican today, like you'd hear for Italian or Thai or, or French or Vietnamese food. However, that doesn't mean we don't have abundant, fresh, healthy, and amazing food here in Costa Rica. So first off, let's talk about grass-fed beef. Great beef, you can find it in the ranches around Guanacaste, which is the northern province here in Costa Rica. Also, pork is very popular, and uh, bacon's an all-time favorite just like it is back home. And seafood, we are just abundant in seafood because remember, we have two coasts. We've got the Pacific Ocean, we have the Caribbean side, and we have fresh lakes and rivers uh, all around the country. So for you anglers, some of the most popular seafood you're gonna find here is, for example, Pargo Rojo, which is our version of Red Snapper. Uh, Dorado, which is mahi-mahi, corvina, which is a type of sea bass, uh, as well as atun or tuna, one of my favorites to catch when I'm deep sea fishing here, uh, as well as trucha or trout. We have several different species of freshwater trout here in Costa Rica as well. Of course, you'll also find the usual suspects like uh, camarones, which is shrimp, octopus, calamari, as well as sea scallops. So there's a great abundance of seafood here as well. But produce is really incredible. So if you think about it, we're in the tropics. We can grow just about everything here, all those beautiful tropical fruits, as well as a multitude of vegetables. So uh, you can buy a lot of that in our supermarkets or our smaller supers. However, I always recommend checking out one of the produce markets or the weekly feria. So there, you'll find produce markets, even little stalls along the road where farmers are selling fresh fruits and vegetables. And then you can also find them weekly. And that's at the farmer's market where the farmers bring their fresh produce into towns and cities around the country. And just about every sizable town has a weekly feria and it's a really fun thing to do because not only do you get your shopping done you get to socialize with your neighbors as well so what I'd like to do is take you on a quick little tour of one of the fruit stands that's close to my home so come on along and we'll check back with you hey guys we are back and guess what we're at a produce stand that's close to my house in a town called Wakas. And as I had mentioned in the segment before, we have amazing fruits and vegetables all over the country at the local ferias, at the supers, and there are several uh, permanent stands such as this one where you find them just all over the country. And I happen to have a special guest with us today, my teacher, my Spanish teacher, mi maestra, Sylvia. And Sylvia comes from a very unique background in that she's Paraguayan, but spent most of her childhood, correct, in the United States, also lived in Paraguay, met her Tico, Costa Rican husband, and ended up settling here in Costa Rica. So, incredible background and the reason I asked her to, to come join me today is she understands Spanish or Costa Rican cooking and all of the unique fruits and vegetables here and a lot of times when expats come down they're a little miffed by the different types of fruits and vegetables so we've picked out a few key ones to share with you. I think we know uh, pineapple, la piña, we know this one. However, we've got some other unique we're going to talk to you about. Well, I think one of the biggest confusions is the plantain. 
yeah. right? Because yeah. in the States, we see this and we see a giant banana. Exactly. And it is not a giant banana and you can't eat it like that. So with these, they must be cooked. They can't be eaten raw. And these two have drastically different flavors. This is more starchy like a potato mm -hmm. and this is sweet. And these, as they look more rotten, they're more delicious. So you don't mind the bruises on a, on a yellow plantain. It means it's gonna be sugary and delicious. This one will be eaten in the morning, sliced in butter, and this one will be deep fried twice. That's your patacones that we see in Puerto Rico, that we see as fries. This one needs frying. I've made a lasagna out of it, and it'll rock your world. So, and they're both incredibly healthy for you. Full, full, full of potassium. I'm coming over for dinner. Okay, now look at this little guy. This is a chayote. Um, it's got that little butt on the bottom. Um, and this one, it's, it's used traditionally all over, all over South America, but here in Costa Rica, um, we have it two ways. We have it in something called a picadillo, which is, this is, picadillo means small little pieces, so it's cut into small little pieces, boiled like a potato, and served with your casala, right, on the side. Or, it can be eaten raw. You can slice it real small, you can put it in a salad, and again, it's almost like a salty apple, consistency of an apple, nice. but yeah. not the sweetness. Yeah. That's a really cool one too. Okay, now. Everybody's my, favorite. One of my favorites Okay, too. so here we call this a Chinese papaya, mamon chin. It's really a lychee, right? And you pop it open, and inside you'll find a lychee that we're all pretty much used to. And we are in season right now. Yes. So we're getting them nice and cheap in big, huge bags. And only during this season. Right. And the season is very short. And it looks yeah. like an alien and Yeah. I know a lot of uh, people from North America see these and aren't familiar with them. It's like, ooh, what's that gross strawberry thing? Right? And the kids love them. Oh yeah. my gosh, they're really delicious. Yeah. So what should we do? Uh, these are something that um, we have an abundance in Costa Rica, and I just found out it's considered a weed. Uh, people don't really consume it as much. It's when the Americans came that turmeric is something that we all love and we know it's an anti-inflammatory. Turmeric. Turmeric. And so this is what turmeric actually looks like. And if you notice here in Costa Rica, it's big and beefy. It looks a lot like ginger. But on the inside, it's orange. It's beautiful. And you got to watch out because it... It actually stains your fingers. Ah. I, I put it in my smoothies. Yeah, with a yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. scrape them into my smoothies every morning, and your fingers come off orange if you don't watch out. Right, so you could do like war paint. There you go. Yeah, I'm gonna make some dye some clothes. Yeah. And now this is really great for you said anti-inflammatory. Huge oh, anti-inflammatory. Yeah. 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 Which is probably really good for COVID times. As well. Actually, when we had the hurricane, mm -hmm. if you remember, we were all stuck in our homes for so long. I couldn't go out. I had pain. I did a, a, a deep, like a real heavy tea of this uh -huh. with honey and lemon. It was delicious and it made me feel better. Like wow. almost instantly. Okay. All right. Oh, this one's cool. Yeah, I mean, All right. I love this. This look. is a, again, we're looking like we're in, dun in dragon times or, <laughs> or in prehistoric times. This is actually your dragon fruit. Funny enough, it kind of looks like that. Um, but the major difference between the American dragon fruit and the one here is the color inside. You're gonna see it's the most beautiful, like almost like fluorescent pink. Yeah. And ours has flavor. Like in the States, I watch cooking shows and they're like, dragon fruit really doesn't have flavor. We argue, dragon fruit has flavor. <laughs> when it doesn't have to travel. This one is great too. Everybody knows about the passion fruit. Nobody ever worries about seeing what it's about, all about. Okay. And the passion fruit, let's see if let's I can... Let's open it up. Let's see if I can get it open. Let's see. Yep, there it goes. Passion fruit is like slump, snot fruit. Maracuja, we call it here. And it looks awful gross oh, on the inside. And you'll see it's got a little pod. Yeah. And it's got the seeds on the inside. But it's delicious. And these are great to eat. Yeah, and they, they add a nice crunch to your smoothie. You can put them in your smoothie, they add flavor and crunch. I've seen ceviche made with this. I've seen adding it to different things because it adds a, a tang of flavor that you can't, you can't compare to. Yeah, that is really delicious. And then the oh, last we have, one. We have one more yeah. unique surprise. Because we just, we just got educated by 
the, the lady that works here, and she explained the mangosteen. So she told us the mangosteen is actually an Asian fruit that um, was being imported. It was, we, we are in the perfect environment for the mangosteen to grow. And we were all sending them off to Asia. Right. COVID came, we can't send them anymore. Right. So the Costa Rican uh, Ministry of Commerce is begging everybody, please try the mangosteen. And it's called the fruit of peace because it always has six segments. So there's, you can always share it yeah, yeah. equally That's with whoever you're going to eat it with. So I haven't tried it yet. I haven't tried it yet either. So I, let's, let's I, give it a try. The very first she time said it's completely almost, original. Almost looks like a little garlic clove. It does. Mm. But it's wow. got a real tutti frutti yeah. sweet flavor. Mm -hmm. And it's never really been part of the Tico diet. Not at all. It's so. new. Yeah. It's the new. And what they're telling us from the Ministry of Health is it's incredibly good as for your immune system booster. Ah. So they're telling people to eat it because it'll help you stave off right. anything right. that's out there. Right. And she did tell us they're starting to sell it. Yes, so that ed the education program has worked. And she's good. Yeah. Yeah, she really did a great job educating us on that. And you did a great <laughs> job educating us on all Well, it's programs. what I do. Yeah. I educate. <laughs> And so, Sylvia, what have you been up to? We haven't been able to have class in person. In yeah, a while, we. There's so. no. Yeah, well, I was as I was Kathleen's Spanish teacher for a long time, um, but we just recently opened a non-for-profit, um, and we then closed the non-for-profit because of COVID, and then we reopened the non-for-profit in an amazing place, a place called Black Stallion here locally, um, 33 acre eco park, 1,200 acres of green, horseback riding, zip lining and they built us a school. We have this beautiful three building, three room school that is in this lush environment and we're now helping children get through this time. We opened a camp so they can get out, get dirty, play in the mud and now we opened a school so that we can help children if they're working on their own, we can help them or we can just help them get through this time and be happy. That's what I hear from all parents. I just want them to be happy. Yeah. So we're, we're educating them while making them happy. Outdoor spaces and social Small groups, bubbles. Big yeah. spaces. Yeah. That's our formula. Now. That's great. Sylvia, thank you so thank much. Thank you for inviting me. And I'm so glad I got to taste that. Yeah, you get to take <laughs> everything home. Yeah. And here we are inside the fruit stand. We've got an assortment of beautiful fruits and vegetables even refrigerator items. So this is one of those permanent stands and they're open every day of the week. And everything is fresh and delicious. And you can see some of the very unusual fruits that we were talking about with Sylvia. I hope you enjoyed our little tour of our produce stand here in Costa Rica. Now, we've seen all these fabulous ingredients around the country. What do we do with them? Well, I'd like to share with you the top 10 Costa Rican foods that you should know. And as I had mentioned, we've touched on a couple of these before. Uh, gallo pinto is a classic dish in Costa Rica, and it literally translates to painted rooster. And what it consists of is rice and black beans uh, mixed with spices, uh, with onion, with chile dulce, which comes in greens and reds. Uh, so you'll see all this mixed together and it looks like a painted rooster. Now often it is served as a breakfast side and it also comes with scrambled eggs or fried eggs, pancake, toast, fruit, uh, often bacon but it isn't always just for breakfast. Costa Ricans enjoy it throughout the day. Now, another very classic dish here is the casado plate. And this is a very filling midday meal. And casado means married in Costa Rican Spanish. So what you've got is this big plate uh, with all of the ingredients married together on the plate. So it typically starts with a protein. It could be beef, pork, uh, fish, or chicken, and then you have each of your sides separate around on the plate. So we're talking a side of rice, uh, typically white rice, 
black beans, a green salad, uh, plantains, sometimes french fries, and usually served with a tortilla and sliced avocado as well. Now another classic dish is the arroz con pollo or arroz con camarones. And basically that means rice with chicken or rice uh, with shrimp or seafood typically. Um, but it's not just rice and chicken. So it's a classic dish that's all mixed together. It takes a little time, prep time and cooking time. Um, they chop up onions, carrots, celery, garlic, cilantro, sweet peppers, and an achiote paste, which gives it that classic color. Now, another dish would be chifrijo. Okay, now this is really more of a snack food, but it can also be served as a meal. And the word comes from the combination of the two names, chicharrones, which is fried pork rinds, and frijoles, which is beans. And the dish is usually served layered, so it will be comprised of your black beans, your rice, your chicharrones, a little pico de, ba pico de gallo or tomatoes, and uh, avocado slices, typically served with tortillas. Okay, you can also make it a vegetarian version and just leave out the pork rinds, okay? Um, another one, and we talked about this at the produce market, is plantains. Now remember, plantains look like big bananas, but they're much starchier and they're not real sweet. So typically, they're fried and used as a side dish with um, pinto gallo or cassado plate. Now they make great snacks. Uh, you can slice them and flatten them and deep fry them into what we call patacones. And uh, these are delicious if topped with a little sea salt or pico de gallo. Now I would be remiss not to mention tamales. Now tamales here are very similar to probably what you're familiar with uh, in Mexico, the Mexican tamale, but they're also decidedly different. So of course they are consistent um, with the Mexican tortillas as far as the corn-based dough called masa, okay, and then it's stuffed with a, a savory filling, uh, for example one of the different types of meats cheeses uh, and vegetables and those can be mixed or separate. Now the Costa Rican fillings tend to be a little bit more garlicky and a little less spicy. Uh, the palate in Costa Rica doesn't afford a lot of spice in it, although you can certainly add chili peppers and some heat if you want to. Okay, so uh, the, what makes them decidedly different though is in Mexico and in many countries in uh, Central America, they use corn husks to wrap the tamales, but in Costa Rica, we use banana leaves. And um, they're packed two together, two different banana leaf tamales packed together and tied with a bow. And those two in the packet are called a piña, but we're not exactly sure where that came from. Anyway, the dish is very popular at Christmas time specifically. So you will see all the women in the kitchen uh, getting together and uh, creating these tamales. It's as much of a social event as Christmas at Christmas time uh, as it is a cooking event. So a few more uh, meals that I'd like to touch on here. One of them is called olla de carne which actually translates to pot of meat. So an olla is a cooking pot, okay? So, but it's really, it's similar to a beef stew. Uh, it's very hearty. You would find it, you know, all over the Americas pretty much. And uh, it's a weekend favorite here. So you'll see all of the families on Sundays get together and have their pot of meat. Um, and it consists of large chunks of beef typically carrots, uh, corn, plantains, taro root, and, uh, and other vegetables that, that they have available. Um, it's often served with rice and beans. If it's not hearty enough, we make it even heartier. 
Now there's a fantastic dish called sopa negra or black soup and uh, it's a perfect alternative for something other than a, a heavy meat based soup and uh, this is typically um, based with black bean and chicken broth and uh, mixed in with onions, peppers, cilantro, garlic. Um, it's kind of a mild soup, but you can spice it up with a little Tabasco sauce or some sal uh, salsa picante, as we call it here. Delicious. Now, another dish uh, that you're probably familiar with is ceviche. And uh, it's a very popular marinated raw fish dish, and it's served chilled. Um, it's very common across all of Latin America, especially in the coastal areas. Um, but of course, Costa Rica likes to add its own twist to it um, with some unique blends of ingredients. So um, a typical whitefish used is tilapia, very, very finely diced vegetables and cilantro. Um, and then it is marinated in lime juice for several hours and that actually cooks it and you're ready to go. Um, I met a Costa Rican who likes to add a little bit of soda water to give it a little sparkle and fizz, which is kind of unique. I had not seen that anywhere else. Um, lastly, I'd like to share with you a dessert or postre, as we call it here in Costa Rica, the Tres Leches Cake. And you may have seen it in Mexico. It's very popular there as well. And uh, Tres Leches actually means three milk. And it is a richly sweet um, cake, very moist and, and yummy. You'll find it all over the Americas. And uh, there are always three milks that are used with it. So it's um, soaked in evaporated milk, sweetened condensed milk, and a heavy cream. So if, uh, if you're looking for a unique dessert to have in Costa Rica, that is one of our favorites. And that pretty much covers the basics of food in Costa Rica. I'd like to thank you very much for coming along on our little tour today. And if you haven't yet, go ahead and follow International Living, subscribe to our channel, and uh, like our videos. We can share all kinds of tips about moving, culture, food, etc. So thank you again. This is Kathleen Evans from International Living. Over and out. Pura Vida.